Amen. Come on, y'all go ahead and give the Lord a shout. If you can't high five somebody, air high five somebody, and y'all go ahead and find you a seat. One more time, I'm just not going to back off. Can y'all just, you know, just quickly just shout out to our worship team. Man, God is so good. Man, I tell you, it's just wow. Just That's all I can say is wow. Amen. And wow ought to be good enough. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't ever want to take that for granted. I'm just so grateful for them. Hallelujah. So grateful for this church. So grateful for so many people who serve every Sunday to help make all this happen. Can we just go ahead and just give them a hand? Thank you. I'm just so grateful. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. I want to welcome those who are watching us online. We just believe that this service will be a blessing to you. Just glad you've tuned in and you're watching. Um, can we just give them a hand? Come on, let's just give them a hand. The same spirit that's moving here, once again, we believe is can move right there in your home. Amen. Just, just say, I'm ready to receive. In here, can it, so somebody just go ahead and say, I'm ready to receive. In your living room, just lift your hand up. Say, I'm ready to receive. Ready to receive. So, so I'm telling you, God has a word for us this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. How many of y'all really ready to receive? Amen. Before I take off, I'm, I really am trying to just get this thing, this ball moving because I want to get it moved because I want to utilize my time because we have communion today. And so we will have communion. Once again, I'll remind you, if you just tuned in online, I want to remind you, get you, get you some juice, uh, a cracker, a piece of bread. At the end of the service, we will have communion during that time for in-house if you can. You know, if you need to slip out early, we understand. But try not to move out of respect and reverence to the communion table while we are serving. Amen? I didn't give her an amen. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> amen. Uh, I want you to know that you know, when we partake of the communion table, it's not just symbolic. It's supernatural. Okay? And so I understand if it's just symb symbolic, okay, yeah, we just do our thing. But no, we show reverence to it because we believe it's supernatural. We believe Jesus is, is moving. Amen. There's a move. There's a move of God while we are partaking of communion. Amen. So, one more time, say I'm ready to receive. Man, I'm, I'm just so excited to continue in this series. I believe it's going to bless you. That's my prayer. And I just hope that as we continue in it, um, you'll just begin to see God will become uh, bigger and bigger. And it, meaning it. The things that try to blur your vision of him will be washed away by the water of the word. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Real quickly, tell your neighbor. I want you to tell your neighbor, even when you don't see it, God is working things out for your good. Even when you don't see it, God is working things out for your good. Anybody else believe that besides me? Come on. I want to make the declaration because often you have to declare before you see God demonstrate his power in your life. And so we want to start with, with voicing it. We want to say it. We want to say it. And if we say it, I believe over time, over time, sooner or later, we're going to begin to see it. We're going to begin to, those are seeds, those are seeds. And I believe they, they will go forth and they will bring forth fruit and we will begin to see the harvest. We will begin to see the manifestation of what our words are speaking. We'll see the fruit of our words. And I believe that God, God is moving in this place. And as we continue to, as I continue to share, I should say this message and this word, I'm going to see fruit. We're going to see fruit in people's lives. We're going to see fruit in people's lives where people are going to realize that God has always been there. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. And God is moving in my life, even when I can't see it. He's still working. He's still there. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you one scripture in my introduction to kind of back that up. It's Romans 8.28. And this is a scripture that I believe should be honestly... Um, one of, one of the fundamental scriptures that you learn when you become a Christian but also be something that you should always put before you no matter how long you've been a Christian. 
This is just one of those scriptures that honestly, if you are going to put it on your refrigerator, if you're going to put it in your bathroom, wherever it may be, but this is a scripture that should be before you. Um, and it, because let me tell you, this is a powerful reminder of how God works things out in our life. And Romans 8, 28 says, says, it says, and we know, and we know that in all things, now I'm going to add the all. Somebody say all. He says, and we know that in all things, not some things, but in all things. And how many of you guys know when he says, and we know that's faith? I know, I know. I'm not doubting devil is a liar. I know, I know, I know. I know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I don't know about you. I know I've been called by Jesus. I've been chosen by Jesus. I know God has a purpose and a plan for my life. And ain't no devil in hell going to stop what God wants to do through me. My God has done too much already. The day he saved me, the day he delivered me, the day he set me free. I'm not turning back. I'm going to move forward in faith. And I believe that God is working all things out for my good. Somebody say devil is a liar. Amen. I was about to say media is a liar, but I just decided to leave that alone this morning. Amen. Some of y'all should have chuckled, but okay. I got a few. Amen. Amen. So, man, I read the scripture. It just speaks to me. And so I believe God is working out what you need to stop worrying about. Did y'all catch that? Why are you worrying? <laughs> God is already working it out. God is working out, working it out. Meaning God already has your miracle in motion. I said, God already has your miracle in motion. Just listen to me. This is your part. Don't lose faith. God already is doing his part. Your miracle is already in motion. It's about to manifest. But if we don't get weary in well-doing, if we will keep the faith, not lose our faith, we will see it manifest. It may take some time. It may say take some time. It may say take some time to manifest, but thank God it's going to manifest, so I'm going to keep the faith, not lose my faith, because I believe God is working all things out for my good. Whew, hallelujah. That ought to get you excited up in here. See, the devil wants you to doubt because when you doubt, you miss out on what God is already working out. Whoo, but we ought to just go ahead and write, write us a, a, some kind of rhyme right now, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, devil is a liar. Mm. God's word is truth. If God said it, I, that settles it in my spirit. I believe it will come to pass. It may take some time, but it's going to come to pass. Tell your neighbor, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Remember, faith believes when it doesn't see. Did y'all catch that? Remember, I shared that with you. Meaning, even when I don't see it, even when I don't see God working, I believe he is working all things out for my good. I can't see it right now. I can't see it right now with my natural eyes. I can't see it right now. I can't see it with my natural eyes, but I believe in my heart that God is working it all out for my good. For my good. I got to throw that in there because so many people think that I'm going through this because God's trying to teach me a lesson. No, God isn't never trying to teach you a lesson. He does want you to learn when you go through trials. Trials are there to teach you, to teach you some things. But but ultimately, how many guys know God is not going to use evil to, co to correct his children? Can't find it in Scripture. Trust me, I've looked. I've looked. Can't find it in Scripture. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he is light and there is no darkness in him. So he, 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 can't, he can't give you what he doesn't have. He can't put it out. He can't put it out because if he puts something out, it's going to be light. If he puts something out, it's going to be good. If you put something out, it's going to be all him. It's going to be G-O-D. It's going to be God. Can I get an amen? Whew. That's just who he is. So you may be going through a storm. You may be going through a storm. But you need to remember when you're in the storm that Jesus is with you through the storm. But God didn't cause the storm. But God can calm the storm. 
Amen. Even though you see the clouds, it may block the sun, but the sun's still shining. Can I get an amen? The sun, the sun still shines. There may be a dark cloud of evil out there in this world that we're saying, but I want you to know the sun's, the sun's still shining. I said the sun is still shining. There's still light on the other side. Can I get an amen? And I, and I believe the light, the light can burn away the darkness. Anybody else in agreement with me on that? Just tell your neighbor real quickly. Just say, hey, the sun's still shining. Come on, that are, we ought to make a, make a song right there. Amen. Whew. So even when I don't see God working, I believe he is working all things out for my good. Now, I may not feel it, feel like he is, and I may, I may not see it. But I believe God will turn. I believe this with all my heart. I believe God will turn all of my losses. I'll speak for me. I can't speak for you, but I believe God's going to turn all my losses into gain. If there's anything you've lost during COVID-19, I want you to know he's going to turn it into your gain. I don't know how he does it, but he just does. He just does. It, it always amazes me as a pastor when I do a funeral and I see something, people, I understand they have to go through that moment of, of grieving, but it's just amazing how one, one area we may see death, but another area God just brings forth life. And a grandbaby's born or something like that. God just has a way of doing that. I can't tell you how he does it, but I just know he can. Can I get an amen? I believe it with all. I mean, I may not always feel it. I mean, I may not always see it, but I, I believe, God, believe God will turn all my sorrows into joy. I believe that with all my heart. I just, I know we're going to have some sorrows. We're going to go through them, but God's going to turn them into joy. I don't know how he does it, but he just does. But ultimately, I want you to see this. I believe God will turn every evil attack of the enemy on your life, on your church, and on your country. I believe he's going to turn them into heavenly blessings. I, I know there's, a, there's a, honestly, you, you, I don't know what your perspective is or how you view it, but I'm going to tell you how I view it, what my perspective. My perspective is that a lot of what we see happening in the world today, they're just, it's just evil. It's, I'm sorry, hatred is evil. I'm sorry, it is evil. I don't care how you put it, I don't care what side you're on. I'm just going to let you know right now that is evil. So there are evil acts. Where there's evil acts, there's evil attacks. Y'all didn't catch that. Where there's evil acts, actions, where there's evil actions, and where there's evil acts, there's evil attacks. And how many guys know there's a spirit behind the action? Did y'all catch that? So that, that stuff exists, and I know it's real. I know it's real. But I'm here to tell you something. There's something greater than a dark spirit. It's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working in the church. The Holy Spirit is working in my life. And I believe it may come against me, but it will not prosper. I believe greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I believe that God is working all things out for my good, even though I don't see it. It's about to manifest. So every time the devil tries to throw a little doubt my way, I just begin to throw something back. I say, it's going to manifest, devil. It's about to manifest. It's, going to be, it's about to manifest. Come on. Mm, amen. I believe it. I believe it. God's going to work th all things out for his people. Meaning this, I just want to put it to you this way. Meaning even when you don't see, even when what you see doesn't look like what God said, <laughs> even when what you see doesn't look like what God said stay focused on his word stay focused on what he says are y'all catching me so this morning I'm going to speak to you or share on the subject of staying word focused mm, wow just look at the screen I just love this screen don't y'all love this background God I love this background it looks so good if there's ever a time, ever a time where we have a generation that's, that's honestly, if, if this is probably the most biblical, uh, illiterate generation that we've ever seen. And that's why I believe it's important that our services always have the word in it. We want worship. We want, but we should always have the word because we got to do everything we possibly can to, to raise up and get the word, get the seed of God's word in, into people's lives. Because how many of you guys know when you know the truth, you won't believe the lie? The reason people believe the lies is because they don't know the truth. And so it's so important, so important that we, that we get the word out. We get the word out. But once you get the word, you need to stay word focused. So if you are in church today and, and if you are saved and you are born again, you are a Christian, you need to remain word focused. I mean, you have to stay word focused. 
Meaning when you hear all the, the lies, you hear all the craziness, when you hear all the things, whether it's on social media or tell you a vision, where it may be, I just want you to know something. You need to stay focused on the Word. Because all the doom and gloom could, could begin to instill fear inside of you. But if you stay word focused, how many guys know faith will arise in you? And no, no matter what comes against our country, no matter what comes against your home, no matter what comes against the churches, that you, you still have faith on the inside. And when there's faith on the inside, miracles, signs, and wonders begin to happen. Amen. So I'm not going to allow the hand of the enemy, hand of the enemy to, to, to be, be upon my life. When I've got the favor of God in my life, I've got the hand of God on my life. And I believe if God's hand is on me, the enemy can't touch me. Some of y'all remember, need to get the MC Hammer spirit. Just remember, can't touch this. Amen. Some of y'all married men need to get the MC Hammer spirit and say, can't touch this. All right, married people, I'm going to leave that one alone. Anyhow, amen. Just got to have some fun at church. So we got to stay focused on his word. Tell your neighbor I'm staying focused. I'm staying focused. I'm saying word focused. I'm saying word focused, meaning this. We need to focus on God's ways, not the world's ways. If we get so caught up on focusing on what the world is doing, we'll begin to forget what God has already done. He paid for it full at the cross for you and me through the death, burial, and resurrection. Can I get an amen? We got to focus on God, God's abilities, not your inabilities. We need to focus on God's eternal promises, not your temporary problems. They're temporary. They're temporary, but God has eternal promises in his word that no devil in hell can stop. No devil in hell can stop. The only one who can stop it is you. So we need to stay word focused and full of faith. Amen. We need to focus on the light of God's word, not all the darkness that is visible in the world today. Now that doesn't mean you don't face your challenges. It just means you face them, focus on the one who can help you overcome your challenges. Did y'all catch that? Well, Pastor, I'm word focused. I'm word focused. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you still don't face your giant. David had to face the giant. You still got to face your giant. You still got to face your challenges. You can't live in denial and say, oh, well, I just believe God's going to supply all my needs. I'm just going to throw this bill in the trash. No, God will supply all your needs, but it doesn't exclude you. It includes you. So God will give you the favor to get a job so you can now pay your bills. Amen. Or he'll supply the seed and you just need to sow it. Woo, come on, somebody up in here. Say, I love Jesus. Amen. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. So we're going to face him. We're going to face him with faith. But we're also going to face him being focused on Jesus, which is the word. We're going to be focused on the word. Tell your neighbor, stay word focused. Got to stay word focused. Because the enemy, the enemy wants to distract you with obstacles or challenges or circumstances. He wants to put all these things in front of you because he knows if you focus on the wrong thing, how many guys know it will not only distort your view of God, but your life will begin to head in the wrong direction. You're going to go in the wrong direction. He wants you to lose focus. He wants to get your focus off of God and who he says he is and what he can do in and through your life. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Real quickly, somebody say, keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. But watch this. Number one is this. And this, is, this is where I'm going to probably slip into a little bit of teaching, but I want you guys to just get your pen and, and your paper ready or your phone or whatever you're using, but uh, good mental notes or whatever it takes. But this is this is good stuff here. And I want you to capture this because I believe this will speak to everyone, but really this is kind of steered a little bit towards the church. And so number one is this. Familiarity keeps you from staying word fo focused. Excuse me. Familiarity keeps you from staying word focused. And let me tell you all what familiarity is. It's going to be on the screens. It's going to help you out. Remember, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what familiarity is. It's when you lose your admiration, reverence, and respect for someone you have grown close to or well acquainted with. 
just powerful. Familiarity. I'm going to show you. You find this throughout the Bible. Familiarity. It's when you lose your admiration, reverence, and respect for someone you have grown close to or well acquainted with. You've got to remember, listen to me, you will have close relationships in your life, but you also have covenant relationships in your life. And when you have these covenant relationships, you should never lose your reverence or respect for them. Because to be truthful, you didn't create that. God did. Man, that's so good right there. That's a, that's a bomb right there. Watch it. Watch this. Familiarity. Familiarity, it's when you get so used to being around someone or something and begin to take them or it for granted. If you're writing that, you need to write granted in all caps. And you begin to take them or it for granted. This happens because you lose sight. That's focus. Because you lose sight of how blessed you are to have them. Because you lose focus, you lose sight of how blessed you are to have them. Familiarity, you begin to take them for granted. You begin to take it for granted. This mean, no, I'm just going to, this is just a quick side note, but you should never take your spouse for granted. If you're taking them for granted, listen to me, you've just slipped into and you've allowed familiarity to set in. And, and you're, about to, you're about to see where it will take you, and you don't want where it will lead you. Familiarity, you do not want to take, and hear my heart on this, this is why it's a little directed towards the body of Christ. Listen to me, listen to me. We can't take for granted, we can't take for granted all the good things that God has done for us up to COVID-19. But we can't take for granted for what he's doing right now. We ought to be thankful and grateful that we're able to live stream right now. The enemy has done everything he possibly can, everything he possibly can to keep the message from getting out. Because he knows when people disconnect, when people disconnect, when people disconnect from him, when people disconnect from him, how many guys know they begin to drift or revert to their past? They begin to go back to Egypt. And they begin to complain and they begin to wander in the wilderness, never experiencing what it's like to live in the promised land. Are y'all hearing me? But no, we can't take for granted that we have live streamed. And listen to me, if you're at home and maybe your, your views of COVID and what is happening here doesn't allow you to come in, we're not going to disrespect you. And you, you we, we value you know, your opinions and your thoughts. But listen to me, we're having church here. And for those who want to come in, we don't need to criticize them. Those who stay home, we don't need to criticize them. But we need to be thankful. We need to be grateful and not take for granted what God has done. God has allowed us not to have one camera, but two cameras cameras then three cameras and we're able to get the message out and there are people who are watching but even the enemy began to attack that and so we we had people we had people watching each week over a thousand people watching every single week but then all of a sudden Facebook the devil, the devil steps in and he changes the algorithms and we go from thousands to hundreds because that's the enemy trying to do everything he can because he doesn't want this getting out but the church just got is getting creative, and we're learning how to even get around that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. But don't, don't take the things that God has given you for granted. Your seat that you have, don't take that for granted. There was a time where we'd have over 350 people in here. You couldn't even get a seat. We, we can't take this for, we need, to, we need to be thankful and grateful. Don't take that. If you are here today, just be grateful that you have a seat, that you're able to enter into worship, that you're able to experience live worship. I'm sorry, we do everything we possibly can to, to give you this same experience in your home, but listen to me, there is a difference between being here live and being in your living room. Adriel helps us with online stuff. And he came here last Sunday, and, and some of y'all, he, he does a, a lot of evangelistic work. He's a, a songwriter and things like that, and uh, he does hip-hop stuff and things like that. And he was at our RC conference, and he told me, he said, Pastor, he said, man, I watch you guys online every Sunday. I've been watching y'all. He goes, but there's a big difference between watching it and being here live. So listen to me. I'm not saying to criticize those who are at home, but what I'm saying is we're going to speak against the devil speak against COVID and everything that's stopping people from coming to church. But I'm also saying you need to remember and not take for granted 
and not become so familiar with church that you forgot what it's live to, like to be here live. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Meaning you, you can't become so familiar that it's no big deal. No, it's a big deal. Amen. Simply put, back to basically defining familiarity. Simply put, familiarity is an enemy of focus. Familiarity is an enemy of focus. It is. It's an enemy of focus. You, you will lose focus. You will lose sight. If you allow familiarity to set in your life. Familiarity can cause you to lose sight of the presence and the promises of God. Did y'all catch that? I took my time on that because I want to make you guys catch that. I'm going to say that again. Familiarity can cause you to lose sight of the presence and the promises of God. I have a question for you. Is familiarity causing you to lose sight of the presence and the promises of God? Is it? Is it? Have you become so familiar with going to church that you stop focusing on growing a church? Familiarity is just set in. Set in. Become so familiar. Some people become so familiar with church, so familiar with Christianity, so familiar with the lingo, so so familiar with I, I know the lingo, I know how it works, I, I know I know the pattern, I, I know what's going to happen next. So familiar with it, but they begin to take it for granted so they don't show up. Oh, I know this is going to be one of those tough, rough messages, but I call it tough love. I call it tough love, bro, T tough love. Because listen to me, I believe, I believe as a pastor, it is my responsibility, it is my responsibility to encourage you. But it is also my responsibility to give you the truth and give you something that will change and transform your life. I'm not here just to make you feel good. I'm here to encourage you so you can experience life change and your eyes cannot be turned towards me, but turned towards the Father. Amen. Familiarity. Have you become so familiar? And this is what gets me. This is what gets me, especially as a pastor. So for me, do you not know that the presence of God shows up here every single Sunday morning? And, and I ain't got time for that. What do you mean? When have you become so important that you're, you're just too important for God? Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm talking real love. Why? Why am I talking about this? Because we all say we want to see revival. I want to see revival. I want to see a move of God. I want to see an outpouring of the Spirit, but yet we can miss worship. You want the mic, brother? Come on. Right. You good? Okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah, Pastor. We want revive. We want to see the Spirit of God. I want, I want to see God heal and work in my family. But I do too. I'm believing God for that. I am. But listen to me. We're not going to receive. We're not going to be a container to receive the anointing. We're not going to be a container to receive the outpouring. We're not going to be a container to receive what God wants to pour in your life if you're not there. He took the containers. And what is in your house? Isn't it amazing how God always starts with a home? What is in your house? Don't be out of position when the Spirit begins to pour out upon His people. Oh, my. I think it's a good time for just a song right here. We may need to go back, bro. It's something old. Mm. Come on. Man. Church. And we've become so familiar, so familiar with, with worship, so familiar with knowing the worship songs. I know what's next. I know the pattern. I know so familiar with worship that we forget about the one we're worshiping. I hear you, this platform isn't for me. It isn't for you. This platform is for Jesus. We're not here to exalt any other name. We're not here to put a spotlight on us. Matter of fact, we're just here to be a light to shine Jesus to the world. What is going on? We didn't put cameras in here so, so, so we can get more Pastor Paul out there. No, we, got, we put the cameras on so we get more Jesus out there to get the word out there. Amen. I don't, any good leader, listen to me, I'm telling you right now, no, there, if you're a good leader, you do not want people to lean on you. It will wear you out and cause you to fall. 
That's why you see guys with big platforms, they begin to fall. You can't carry the weight of everybody's challenge and everybody's problem. You can't allow them to lean on you. will fall over you. I'm sorry, you just ain't that big. You ain't that strong, but Jesus is. I said Jesus is. Our job is to point them to the one who can help them. Because there's going to be a time in their life where Pastor Paul can't be there for them to cast out that demon. They got to learn that they've got the authority in the name of Jesus to lay hands on the sick, to, to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Whew. Come on. Familiarity, familiarity. Familiarity will stop a move of God. I said it again. Familiarity will stop a move of God. Why? Because we lose our focus. And when you lose your focus, you lose your faith. Did y'all catch that? When you lose your focus, you lose your faith. I'm talking about being word focused. You will lose your faith over time. This is why, this is why, listen to me, there's danger in familiarity. Watch this. This is why. Because when familiarity sets in, it means it becomes your natural uh, habitat. When familiarity begins to set in, you will begin to seek it out. When familiarity sets in, y'all need to catch this. This is so good. And, and there is a scripture in Proverbs for this, but it, I don't have it with you. But listen to me, just the scripture I'm about to read will still back it up. When familiarity begins to set in, you begin to seek it out. Listen, we can be going through this pandemic, through this crisis, and we're going through this. The church is going through all this. And, and listen to me, here, here's my question. Have you become so familiar with misery that misery is now common? That pain is common? That stress is common when it should be uncommon? No, misery should not be common. It should be uncommon. The misery, the misery should be uncommon. And listen to me, the miracle should be common. Signs, wonders, and miracles, that's what we should be see happening every single day of our life. We should be walking in a miracle every single day. That's what should become common. I'm not going to allow hatred to become my new norm. Especially in the church. And we preach love. Now listen, listen to me. I gotta, I gotta bring some correction to this too, and this is tough love. But listen to me, listen to me. When you make a mistake, when you may make a mistake, thank God He has forgiveness. But don't become so familiar with forgiveness that you continue to live in that sin. And get mad at God because you got to deal with consequences. If you can't deal with the consequences, just show you're still a little boy. And you haven't learned. You haven't learned how to be a man. Because men fess up when they mess up. Somebody say, man up. Amen. I'm a man, so I'm talking to the men. So y'all ladies can go ahead and amen away. This is your moment. Like, I like Pastor Paul. He talks to my man. Yeah, I, I know. Y'all don't think I don't know what it's like. I know what it's like. I, I know. This is me, man. I'm telling you, church. Hear my heart on this. This is tough love. I am not, I'm not condemning anyone. But I am going to show you some tough love. And I want you to realize that we cannot become familiar. So from we can't allow familiarity to set into our church and set into our lives. If we allow those things to set in, not only do we lose our focus, remember I said we lose our faith, but what was once uncommon now becomes common. And now people become addicted to misery. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? How do you know? Just look at social media. Pastor, how do you know this stuff? I hear from God, of course, but I look on social media too. It, it'll tell you some things. I didn't get very many amens. Somebody say amen. Amen. So just, we can't allow, we can't allow familiarity to set in because if we allow it to set in, we will begin to seek it out. Begin to seek it out. The devil is a liar. 
my God has been too good for me, to me, for me to become a negative person. My God has been too good for me to allow all that negativity to come out of my mouth. Have I just forgotten? Am I starting to take for granted what Jesus did for me? I've got to remember, he took me out of Egypt. Have I forgotten? Am I starting to take for granted all the things he blessed us with, all the things he's done in my life? There are some people, listen to me, that they have been delivered from drugs, set free from alcohol, set free from anger. Are y'all hearing me? Set free from a dark life. No, I haven't gotten so familiar with Jesus that I forgot about all the good things that he's done for me in the past. Remember, I've shared this with you before. Matter of fact, all the things that God has done for you in your past should be faith fuel for the future. And that keeps me from becoming too familiar with Jesus. I don't ever walk into a service, sit down, and just say, okay, what can you what can you teach me today? That alone, right there, that attitude, you know what you just did? You, you just pushed God out with your bad attitude. Did y'all hear what I just said? You just pushed him out. You just pushed him out. No, you should never walk into church saying, Pastor, what can you teach me today? You walk into church, Jesus, I want to hear your voice today. You can tell who's become too familiar. I don't care if you've been here for two years or, or 15. No, I, I, I've come, I've entered in. I know your presence shows up. I'm here to hear the voice of God. God, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. My eyes aren't on the man, my eyes are on Jesus. But I know that he uses the man, so I'm going to show respect and honor towards that man. Because I didn't choose him, you chose him, Jesus. You put him there. And if he's there, I'm not going to get so familiar that I begin to dishonor him or respect him. I'm going to continue to respect him because I know the mantle on his life wasn't given by me. It was given by heaven. Listen to me. There's a big difference between, I don't know how, any other way to say this, so y'all got to love me. Y'all got to love me. There's a big difference between showing somebody honor and sucking up. I don't know any other way to say it, honey. You, you, you're better with the words than me. So um, there's a big difference. Listen to me. You, you don't earn brownie points with God, and you don't earn brownie points with the pastor. No, God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. So if you want, if you want what's on me to get on you, you, you got to do it with the right heart. I'm going to leave it at there. I think enough said. Amen. Are y'all okay with that? Hey, I just want to make sure. Are y'all okay with that? Because if you don't, I'm going to go deeper. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just messing with y'all. Tell your neighbor, stay focused. I'm telling myself, stay focused. This is what we're going to do. Let me read. Let me read. I'm going to read to you where familiarity shows up in Jesus' hometown. Watch this. Right there, right in the midst, familiarity shows up. Some of y'all know this scripture. It's Matthew. I'm going to read it. It's, cha it's chapter uh, 13. I think I've got, what do I have, 58 through 57 or something like that. Now I'm going to go through, yeah, I'm going to go 53 through 58. Hmm, that's going to be good. Now I could have read Luke's. I think it might be a little shorter, but I just want you guys to, I just like the way this reads in the NLT. And let me read it to you. We're going to start with verse 53. It says this. It says, When Jesus had finished telling uh, these uh, stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He was, he was teaching parables. He was giving them parables. Verse 54. And he returned to Nazareth, his hometown. Here he is. He's home. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed. First there at all. Oh man, and his teaching, they were amazed and said, Where does he get this wisdom and power to do miracles? So he's teaching. The miraculous is happening right there before them. Verse 56. Then they scoffed or scoffed. 
My wife said I said it right, scoffed. Watch this. And watch this. This is where familiarity just, it, it's right here. It's right here in verse 55. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. He's just the carpenter's son. Now, in your Bibles, underline the word just. That right there tells you there's a problem. He's just a carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, all his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply, watch this, and they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Familiarity caused them to lose sight of who Jesus really was. Familiarity right there. They, they lost sight of the presence of God because how many of you guys know he wasn't just a man? He was the son of God. He wasn't just a man. He was the Messiah. And familiarity began to sit in and they begin to lose sight. They begin to lose focus. And when you begin to lose focus, it begins to lead you to doubt and unbelief, which means you begin to lose your faith. And that's what's happening in this text. But you can see where it started when they said he's just the carpenter's son. When you start saying it's just worship or it's just church, it's no big deal. I can sleep in. I can catch it later. I'm here to tell you something. You just allowed familiarity to slip in your life. And I'm preaching it because it's time that you, be, you get set free from it. You've got time for everything else in your schedule, but yet you exclude God, but yet you want God included in your life when you need Him. No, God wants to be involved in every area of your life every day all the time. Remember, I've shared this before. Church is supposed to be 24-7. You are a 24-hour Christian living seven days a week for Jesus. Every single day living my life for Jesus. This is not a part-time Christianity that we're supposed to be living. It's not the part-time Christianity life. Too many part-time Christians. I just need, I just, I, I'm, I'm all for Jesus so when I need him. Maybe you wouldn't need him. As much if you were you would allow him to be there for you in every season. Amen. <laughs> I was about to go somewhere, but I'm gonna hold back for the sake of time. Mm -mm -mm. He's just the carpenter's son. Because of familiarity, they're unwilling, they're unwilling, unwilling to, to believe in him. Unwilling. I'm unwilling, I'm unwilling to believe that he can be anything more than just a carpenter's son. That's, that's all he can be. He can't be anything greater than that. Have you gotten so close to someone that you forgot how great they are in your life? Have you become so close to someone that you no longer see greatness in them? Let me go a little deeper with this because I don't think you're fully seeing this. You can become so close to someone that you no longer see greatness in them. And when you don't see greatness in them, then you begin to complain about them. Ask anybody who's been married for a while. I'm not getting very any amens. It got real quiet in here. I must really be stepping on some toes right now. Remember, when I step on your toes, they're not to hurt you, just to cause it to shine. Y'all get some shiny shoes today. And, it, it, and you're so close. And listen, you could tell the minute familiarity steps in, I no longer see greatness in them. I don't see great things. So I begin to complain about everything they do wrong. I, I share their weaknesses because when you're close to someone, you know their weakness is better than those who are far off. And now what happens when you begin, when you begin to talk about their weaknesses, they no longer want to tell you the weaknesses or tell you their struggles. But you want them to get better but you think by getting them better is by telling them how they wrong they are, when the truth is if you want them to get better, you got to start telling them how right they are. It's not what you do wrong. I'm going to share what you do right. And you know what? When they get better at doing what they do right, the things that they do wrong, they begin to get better at that. But it just takes a little time. 
but you want them, you want to zoom in and you want to focus on their weakness when really you should be focusing on their strengths. Think about how God works with us. God tells us how great we are, how wonderful we are, how marvelously made we are. He doesn't talk about our mess. He just talks about the masterpiece that he wants us to become in his hands. So we can't get so familiar with our spouse. We can't so get so familiar with our pastors. We can't get so familiar with our church that all we see when we walk in the doors are the weaknesses. I wish their lights could be different. You know, it's always hot in that sanctuary. You know, it's always cold. I'm freezing in there all the time. You know, the worship music is just so loud. It's just so loud. Other people say, well, the worship, y'all need to turn it up. It is so quiet. There's no way we are possibly going to please everybody in this room. You, you guys are hearing some real talk right now. Boy, I'm just being very transparent with y'all. Super wide open. I, don't, I just don't like the way they do that. You know, they ought to just do that different. Maybe, listen to me, maybe we're not doing it that way because you are not, you are not, Allowing God to use you to be the strong link instead of the weak link. It's not always a weak link, there's a missing link. Maybe there's a missing link. But when you walk in, could you talk about how the good all the good things we do, not just give us the bad things? We do a lot of things great. You got to remember, this is Wharton, Texas, and we we are we are doing like Bucky's. We're doing big. Come on, somebody. Come on. And, and and all you see is the color of the carpet. Can I get an amen? If, if you want to see change, listen to me. You don't speak death you speak life you come in and you speak life and you don't become so familiar with what you have that you forget that there are a lot of good things going on in this room there are a lot of listen beyond the cameras beyond the chairs beyond the walls but the people did you 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 got so caught up in in one little thing over here that, well, they painted the walls and these chairs are there, but you forgot about the life that was sitting in that chair that just got saved last Sunday. What about the lady who hadn't been to church in three years and she finally, God made a way for her to get to church and because somebody loved on her, she didn't leave the church. She stayed in church and she got set free and delivered from her drug addiction and her problems. Do we want to see the miraculous in the house? Do we want to see the miraculous in the house? Then we need to be grateful not become familiar with what God has done in the house. And I believe the more we do that, we become a conduit for God's favor and God's power to move in the service. And we will begin to see more signs, wonders, and miracles because we have become so familiar with what God has given us that we begin to take it for granted, but we're grateful. And because we are grateful, it begins to draw in. It's called the law of magnetism. Gratefulness draws in the power and the presence of God. And not only does it do that, it opens our eyes to see that God's been moving the entire time. So even when I didn't see it, he was still there. Come on, somebody, amen with me. It's good stuff. Mm. Let me continue. Let me give you point number two. I'm about to close this out. Now let's continue in the, in the text because I stopped at verse 56. I mean, verse 57. We're going to go to verse 58. But let me finish out verse 57. And remember, they said, And they were deeply offended, and they refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, Jesus is talking, he said, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. That's sad. It's sad because he even tells them who he is. Why would we, why would we ever doubt God when he tells us in his word who he is? That's why we're going to stay word focused. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he'll do it. He tells him I'm a prophet. I don't, that's a whole other subject. But let me continue. Verse 58. 
And so he did, watch this, and so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Wow, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did, this is Jesus, did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Mm. That's why it's important that we stay word-focused. We've got to stay word-focused because if we don't stay word-focused, we will lose sight. We'll lose sight. We'll begin to lose sight. When we lose sight, we'll begin to lose faith. When we begin to lose faith, we don't see God's hand move. We don't see. We don't see. Even though he's still there, we're not seeing it manifest. And we need to ask ourselves, we need to ask ourselves, this isn't God, it's us. Lord, I want to get my heart right. I want to keep the faith. Because even when I don't see you're moving, I believe you're already moving. It's just a matter of time before it will come to pass or it will manifest. Amen. I want you all to make sure you understand where I'm going with that. Number two, here's what i got to close out with. Number two. Familiarity can produce unbelief. We just see it here in the text. But if you stay focused on the word, it can produce faith. Familiarity can produce unbelief. But if you stay focused on the word, it can produce faith. Why do you say that? This is why I say it. Because when your faith grows, unbelief goes. Did y'all catch it? When your faith grows, unbelief goes. I said, when your faith grows, unbelief goes. I could also say it like this. When you, when you are really word-focused, you will see beyond the obstacle of familiarity. I said, when you're really word-focused, you will see beyond the obstacle of familiarity. Because I'm word-focused. I'm word-focused. And when you do, this is what happens. Your vision of God gets bigger and your circumstances get smaller. I'm going to say that again. When you do, your vision of God gets bigger. Gets bigger because I no longer see the obstacle. I see how big my God is, and there's not an obstacle the enemy can put in front of me that can cover up my God. This is a God who didn't just create me, didn't just create the earth, didn't just create the sun and the moon. This is a God who created the entire universe. You know how big that is? It is so big, the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything could fit in it. That still, still doesn't even come close to how big our God is. So the truth is, if an obstacle isn't big enough to, to block out our God, why can I not see him, Pastor? Why is my vision, vision blocked? Why am I blinded to not seeing God? Because you've lost focus. It's because you're not focused on how big your God is. You're focused on how big your problem is. Get your eyes off the obstacle. Get your eyes on God. Get your eyes on Jesus. And you'll begin to realize that, listen to me, you begin to realize that your God is larger than life. He's larger than life. He is a life giver. He's larger than life. Anybody believe he's larger than life besides me? He's larger than life. He's larger than your relationship issues. I said he's larger than your financial challenges. I said he's larger than your health symptoms. He's larger than COVID-19. He's larger than Democrats and Republicans and whatever in between. Can I get an amen? He's larger, listen to me, he's larger than life's difficulties. He's larger than your shortcomings. Oh, any, can I get an amen in here? Come on, somebody. He's larger than any obstacle that you may face. He's larger than any giant that may come before you. He's larger than any challenge. He's larger than anything, 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 anything the enemy may throw your way. God is that big. He's so big. You need to realize or I should say this way, you need to get a bigger vision of your God. Last week, I talked about how we can't allow our circumstances to define God. But in this one, I want you to capture that you need to, listen, you need, you need to get a bigger vision of your God and realize that there's nothing larger than Him. Nothing larger than my Jesus. You ought to know He rescued you. I said, you ought to know he rescued you. 
There's some of you sitting in this room right now that had not been for the Lord to show up right on time in your life, you wouldn't even be sitting in that seat. Some of y'all be buried six feet under, but because Jesus showed up right on time in your life, he rescued you, he saved you. He was right there when everybody else turned their back on you. When you called out and nobody showed up, Jesus was the only one who was really there. I couldn't see him, but he was there. But he was there. And he pulled me out of that dungeon. He pulled me out of that pit. And he put me on solid ground. He gave me a new life and a new start in him. Let's don't get so familiar with Jesus that we begin to take him for granted. Let's don't get so familiar with church that we begin to take it for granted. Let's don't get so familiar with worship that we begin to take it for granted. When did missing worship become okay? I understand we all have circumstances and challenges that come up in life and sometimes it just doesn't happen, but that shouldn't be the new norm. That shouldn't be common. That should be uncommon. Coming late to church should not be a common thing. It should be an uncommon thing. Worship, worship. In the middle of worship, and I'm the pastor, I've had God touch me. I've had God heal my wife miraculously twice, standing right here at the altar. Pancreatitis, dealing with pancreatitis. Doctors can't do anything for her. You just got to wait it out. But God instantaneously heals her right here. Don't tell me that God does, his presence doesn't show up in the middle of worship. When does, when does, missing out on prayer. Oh, I can just catch it later. No, prayer is fellowship with God. Are y'all hearing me? Hear my heart. God, God is just too good. He's been too good for me to start taking him for granted. So good to me. He's, 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 this church wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God showing up right on time. God has rescued us time and time again. God has done it over and over and over. And if he did it back then, he'll do it again. I said, if he did it back then, he will do it again. He's going to do it again. We are facing some new obstacles. We are facing some new challenges. We are facing an evil and a darkness that maybe we've never seen before, church. But you've got to realize that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he is light and there is no darkness in him. And that we can call upon the name of the Lord and he will help us. He is our present help in the time of trouble. And if God can get the Israelites out of Egypt and rescue them, then God, listen, to me. He can rescue us from any Pharaoh, any dark spirit, anything that comes against us because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I will not operate in fear. I will not lose my focus because if I lose my focus, I will lose my faith and I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus and I'm going to stay word focused because I know what the word says. I know what the certain word says so that's why I can say devil is a liar because I know the truth and when you know the truth, you know who's really lying. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So church, we will not be deceived. And we will not allow familiarity to set in. We're going to be history makers, world changers in this church and difference makers. And I can't wait to see what comes next. Amen. Amen. If y'all receive, y'all go ahead and give the Lord a hand. Amen. Right before I we, we partake of the communion table. I just want to just do this one little quick. I want to do a quick prayer here. I'm not going to exclude this part of the service, but I believe there's some of you who are watching online. There's some of you in this room that maybe you started to take God's presence and God's promises for granted. Start taking Jesus for granted, and you need to refocus. You need to refocus. Some of y'all need to realize, listen to me, the only reason that you're even here today is because of God's hand of protection and provision on your life. He's the only reason you've made it this far. 
We don't need to take that for granted. It'll become so familiar that we forget. We need to refocus. So if you're in here, you need to refocus. And if you're watching online or in this room, you say, hey, Pastor, I feel like I've backslidden. Or maybe you're, you say, I've never surrendered my life to Jesus. I want to know this Jesus. I want to pray for you. The Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That means you're going to, listen to me, you're going to make heaven, and you can't experience heaven on earth. So if you're watching online and you're in this room, you say, Pastor, that's me. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus. I want to pray for you. If that's you, can I see your hand if you're in this room? No shame in lifting up your hand. No shame at all. Say, that's me. If that's you, I, I see your hand. Anybody else? I see your hand. 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 Y'all can lower your hands. If you're watching online, just just put in the in the uh, chat box, I surrender. Just put, I surrender. I surrender. The church, I'm going to ask you to repeat, repeat this prayer with me. And say, dear Lord, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new. Help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I receive your love, your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Can y'all give them a hand? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. God is so, so, so good, so good. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who just say, Pastor, I just, I just need to get my eyes back on Jesus. I need to refocus. I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. If that's you in the room, just right where you're at. God knows I don't need to know. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus for those who say they just need to refocus. Get their eyes back on you, Jesus. Staying word focused. Remembering, Father God, how good you are. How you'll never leave them or forsake them. And how you can work all things out for their good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to partake of the communion table at this time. Those of you are watching online, you can go ahead and get your bread, cracker, whatever you're using, juice. from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 26 and it says this let's read this I don't want to there we go it says the Lord on the night when he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let's give thanks together let's break and let's share In the same way, he took the cup saying, this is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in it and remember it to me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Lord. Let's share together. we partake of communion it is symbolic like I shared before but it's also supernatural I believe Jesus enter ends with us right there and there's an anointing and there are people who partake of communion and, instanta and instantaneously get healed right there I believe God's power supernatural power is in the midst when we begin to partake of communion can I get an amen Thank you, Jesus. Did y'all receive this morning? Can y'all go ahead and give the Lord some praise? Tell him how grateful you are.